excited to talk to you about this season. Um, huge fan of yours for, for a long time, but Thank I want to know. Thank you so much. <laughs> like, so we know the story of Victor Stone. Like Vic, we know he's a football star turned superhero due to the t- cyber tech and advancements. But now he loses his superpowers um, and cyber tech. So like he, it feels like he's no longer a cyborg and now becomes Victor Stone again. Who is Victor Stone without these powers? And does he no longer become cyborg? Is he just Victor Stone because of that? So who is Victor Stone about cyborg? Um, Victor Stone is Victor Stone. You know, um, I think I think um, uh, I think the, the real question would be who is cyborg without Victor Stone? You know, um, I think that Victor is at the forefront of of cyborg, and you know, even to how he wants to be viewed in terms of him wanting to be Vic and being regarded as Vic. We see in episode uh, his in entry episode, episode two, season one, when he comes in and he's oh my god, you're a cyborg, and his immediate response yeah. is, "You can call me Vic." You know, like that's how that's who he is, and so I think that him now having an opportunity to actually get into his own skin and feel like what it feels to be Vic again without Cyborg is, is, is a huge change for him for sure. And something that he, he wants to explore and wants to, I wanted to have the choice um, to explore. Um, but he, he's still a superhero at heart. You know, it's not just the cybernetics in which make him, that gives him his physical ability, but he, he, he still has the heart. He still has yeah. the mindset and he still has a will to do good and a want to, you know, serve and protect. Well, we know we found out found out that you know he was his youth was really stripped from him, you know, because he was focused on being a superhero and he wants to still be a superhero. But now that he no longer has his powers and he looks the way he does, why continue being a superhero? Why doesn't he just enjoy the rest of his twenties, partying, dating, meeting girls? Like, what makes him stay? I think it's a it's a it's a it's a tough place because um, one thing is that that's all he knows. You know, he's all he has been since being cyborg, since getting a cybernetics, is being a superhero. And he had experienced a to a certain level, to a certain degree, of being a um, a a regular black man living in Detroit. Um, but once he gets a cybernetics, which has been a heavy part of his life, that's all he now knows. And he's been also programmed in a way that you know um, allows him to, or makes him, or positions him in a place that means that he has to be a superhero he he is created at this point to protect and serve and that's the real that's the real struggle and the real fight that he has that he hasn't had the choice you know and all he wants and all he wanted was to have a choice and maybe he would have decided like yeah I want to be a superhero I want to take this on and take on that responsibility because I know what I want to do at heart and who I am at heart but I didn't even get the choice to do that okay cool well we're going to explore that we're going to see what it feels like to be me and for me to you know do all the things I didn't get to do and, and didn't get to be and didn't get to experience or find difficulty experiencing, like, for example, the dating app um, going on cash and not being able to go on a simple date. Like, I want to experience these things. So um, I think that now we're in that in that zone where we're going to explore and he, he wants to feel what it feels like to be Vic. Yeah, well, you know, giving up his powers, you know, you know, to say he not say that he becomes human because he still has the cybernetics like and him going through this journey throughout the season of figuring out who he is, where he is, um, what do you feel like was the breaking point? Because I feel like there are so many, but what do you feel like was that breaking point for him? I think the breaking point was definitely the first major trigger was um, episode five, um, uh, where he meets Frenzy. I think when he's questioned and he's asked, you know, why are you, who are you, what are you? And he's for the first time faced with, um, you know, he's told, uh, is, is, is that just rehearsed? Is, is what you say, I wanna, I wanna protect and serve. And, he's, and he said, you know, is that just rehearsed or is that actually who you actually are? Or have you been, you know, programmed in this way? And it makes him, it makes him question it in that way for the first time to the point where he has to get those answers. What does it mean to be black? Am I black? Am I a black man? I'm being told I'm not. What does that even mean? And he goes on that journey. And then when he goes to the afterlife and has a conversation with his mother, he then realizes, hold on a minute. So this wasn't entirely uh, the only way that I could have been saved or there was another agenda behind this. And, and I, I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I wasn't privy, I wasn't to, privy this. to this. And so I think so, that it's, um, it's an opportunity for him to, to go on that journey and discover and, and, and answer these questions and see who he is. And I think that that's the, that was the real trigger, you know? And then going and seeing his mom was the kind of, 
defamation of, okay, this is real and this is something that I want to explore now because I have the truth. Well, my favorite thing um, about this, about Vic, though, is even though he has a great relationship with his mother before she passed and everything, but also his relationship with his father, you know, like it's, it's, it's always great to see a relationship, Black fatherhood, and it's always great to see that in stories being told. But Silas may not be the warmest person, but he does deeply care for his son, but he just understands the harshness of the world, and that's why he wants to protect his son so much. He makes him invincible for that very reason. And, but strips Victor of that choice. What do you take on this relationship and how do you feel like it will evolve now that Victor has gotten rid of the cyborg kinetic pieces that connect them? Yeah, I think that's a really, that's a really key point. You know, I think that it's so strange because this is the first time where Silas has actually really told Vic, you know, why he is cyborg. The question that we've been pretty much asking since season one. And he's got that answer finally, but that answer based on, where it came from just wasn't good enough for him. And he feels like, you know, it's been projected, like Silas projected his fears onto Vic. You know, the, that's why he says that that thing that you, that you was pressed down on that, that just struggled, that stopped you from breathing. And, you know, when you had that night in Star Labs where the cop came after you, et cetera, et cetera, you know, you turned me into the very thing in which you was afraid of. I am a, a, a security guard. I am a Star Labs uh, creation. Um, and so I understand where you're coming from. I understand that the fear that has driven you to, to make me who I am, but there was another way and there was another opportunity and you robbed me from that freedom. And you're my dad. Yes, you protect me and you love me, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, I wanted a choice and there was another way. And on top of that, you lied to me. You didn't give me this option before. You didn't tell me that this was a, this was a choice. And I think that's where that hurt comes from. And now he, he wants to and has always wanted to be his own man and um, have the opportunity to do what he wants to do as opposed to being told to do something that he has to do, you know? So yeah, it was great to, to understand that and hear that from Silas, but at the same time, the answer just wasn't good enough for Vic. Mm -hmm. Well, another thing I, I, I want to point out is that the show is, is great at being outrageous. It's an outrageous show, like, uh, the, the, but it's also amazing at telling intimate and serious topics, like mm. within the stories, a sexual assault, depression, guilt, PTSD, and race, especially the situation at the store, Vic's uh, past situations with previous military and cops, you know, because he's cyborg, you know, and then Silas' personal story. What was the process for you when going through these situations and scenes, especially having to have the headspace for the serious topics and the silliness of it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's the beauty of our show, you know, it's, it's, it's so tactful, and my hat goes off to our room patrol, our writer's room, for being able to deliver on that, not be fearful, and to really touch on subjects that others might shy away from, but we dive deep into these things, and I think that um, it's written in such a beautiful way that allows us to, you know, it, it's not, there's not too much work that we have to do as the actors, to, to feel comfortable in that space with how serious these topics are, but at the same time, the weird, the wonderful, wacky and uh, laughable world that we live in because it's written that way. And so I think for us, it's kind of just living moment to moment and being in those moments and um, understanding that we're, we're, we're storytelling, we're telling a story and we're touching on these subjects, which are you know beautiful because they help so many people, you relate in so many different ways. And um, also, you know, I feel like we do relate to our characters in some way, and I definitely relate to Vic and the struggles that he's going through. And so when I got even this, this arc and um, this season and exploring what it means to be Black and living in a society in America and what, what this means and, and being a Black man in the world, um, it's something that I, that I experience on an everyday basis. And so I can tap into my own experiences as well as what I'm given on the page. Um, and then when we do get those moments, because it is so heartfelt and it is so, you know, serious and, 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 and wrenching for us, we do uh, appreciate those opportunities to laugh a bit. We appreciate these opportunities to live in the world and wack, wacky world. Um, and yeah, we take those opportunities and we run with them. Yeah, well, another thing that the show is, I'm hoping the show will touch on is that, you know, Vic had this prosthetics, like, you know, he had these things because of disability that happened to him. And now that he loses it to become what we call normal, it loses a lot of, it, a lot of people may feel uncomfortable because you, for a lot of people who have prosthetics, they can't immediately change that way. What would you say the story is trying to tell kind of for the future wise of, of 
the viewers who are going to feel that way, who are going to feel like, oh, wait, but the prosthetics, and now he's, he's like, back to, he, he loses the prosthetics. What would you say to the, to the viewers who may feel a little bit lost because of that? I think what I'd say to those viewers is that um, I think that it, it is testament to seeing who Vic was with his cybernetics and the power in which he gained and the fact that it, for Vic it wasn't about the the cybernetics and uh, and being a cyborg for Vic it was more so about having the choice and not being presented with the choice and knowing that there was a choice you know mm. like that's what's most important knowing that that I, I, I had a choice here and I didn't get to explore that choice. And I know who I am and who I am and I'm not defined by my prosthetics. I'm not defined by uh, my cybernetics, but I am um, defined by who I am and the heart in which I have. And so uh, not being able to be given the choice, knowing that there was one is where Vic really struggles. Not from the fact that, oh, he just wants to not be cybernetic. It's that there was another way because he loves being cyborg. You, you see that in, in, in every day. He, he loves who he is. And, and actually, in fact, being cybernetic is what actually enhances him. We see when he goes to take out his arm cannon, when he needs that. These are things that he needs in order to, to save, to protect his friends, to protect himself. And the very thing in which he wanted to uh, explore getting rid of is actually crippling him and actually stopping him from being who he is. So, you know, the, the, on the flip side, when you look at, uh, uh, you know, these, these um, cybernetics in which he, he wanted to get rid of, in actual fact, now he is not able to do the very things in which he wanted to do, which is love and protect his family after Doom Patrol, because he's got rid of what made him and what, and who he is. But at the same time for Vic, he has to explore that and he has to understand and, and experience what it feels like to have a choice and who knows where it will lead. But at this time, he, he needs to he needs to go on that journey. Yeah, of course. Well, uh, last question, because I know you're, you have a long day of, of schedules, but no you know, congrats on season four. I'm so excited that, you know, it's going to continue because the show is incredible. Um, and it, 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 each, each, season it just goes up and up like with the with the strangeness with the with the seriousness with the kookiness of like of the of the characters too like no one expected the vampire butts to come back uh, and we want to know like what do you hope for victor that you like or for yourself uh sorry then to to what you want your character to deal with what you hope to see because doom patrol does it could be outrageous it could be serious what would you like your character to deal with or like to see further in the future for the next few episodes? And it could expand from more sex ghosts, if you like, or anything that you that you want to see from the comic book. Yeah, I I, I just want the I just want the world of the Doom Patrol to keep getting wackier and wackier. I get surprised every single season where I'm like, okay, season one was so good and so wacky and wonderful and so <laughs> heartfelt. How do we actually take this up a level? And then season two comes along, and it's like, oh my life, this was incredible. The sex ghosts and the, the butts <laughs> and everything. How do we take it up a level? And then season three does the same. So at this point, I've just learned to trust that process, and I know that our room will deliver on bringing this show even bigger and better um, for season four, as we have done every season. And I can't wait to see what that looks like and how how that goes. And uh, things that I want to see is I, I want to see more of that world. I want to see um, even, you know, I, I'm interested to see where this this journey goes for Vic and and how uh, how his decision making ends up, you know, affecting him and what decisions he'll make in the future as a result of that. That's all very exciting to me. Um, his tech, you know, losing his tech. What does that mean? How does that how does that happen? How how long can he not have an arm cannon for? How long can he, you know, live in this world? Or will he just decide that he is happy where he is and that you know he's happy being a superhero at heart? Um, and so I'm looking forward to seeing all of these things um, and understanding what that look will be. Um, and yeah, season four is going to be it's going to be just as wacky, weird, and wonderful. And I haven't even I haven't even had a conversation about what that looks like. But I just know and I trust the process um, based on what's been delivered. And and I just say to the viewers that you guys all should too. And um, expect that it's going to be just as weird, wacky, wonderful, heartfelt, um, laughable, and intriguing as it has been every season. Yeah, and now you don't have to worry about the extra makeup as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I get, I get, uh, my skin gets a little break from um, 
from the uh, the prosthetics and and who knows how long that will last. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, well, thank you so much. It was so great talking to you. I can't wait to see what next season holds for you. Anytime. Thank, thank you so much, much Laura. Have a great thank day. You. Thank you. Watch it on your screen, hit play, so check this.